Hi guys, so we've had a haircut. Well, hey! So today we're starting the Thomas tram stop to Clifton South in Nottingham. It is also a park and ride. And we're off to the historical haunted Clifton Hall. Then we're off to Frompton Hall and then to Gotham or maybe it's Gotham. But Bill Finger was the writer of the original Batman in 1939 and he used the little village of Gotham as, or Gotham, as the uh, place name for, obviously, Gotham City. Anyway, but let's get cracking. We're gonna head up to Mill Hill first. We are in Nottinghamshire today, six miles southwest of Nottingham city centre. We're on a nine mile hike where we are now heading to the Mill Hill, then to Clifton Village before reaching the haunted Clifton Hall. Then we're going to Barton and Fabris, and onwards past River Trent to Frompton Hall. From Frompton, we cross over the A453 and up Gotham Hill to the village of Gotham, or Gotham. And here we go over to Barton Moor and Clifton Pastures back to our start point at the Park and Ride. So if you like hiking, backpacking and long distance walking, and uh, like to learn some tips and skills about the great outdoors, then please consider subscribing. Well, I wouldn't say it was much of a hill, but it was a bit of a bump. We just walked down this road, which actually is a right away. Uh, I believe it was a footpath before and the a sort of service road by the side. The noise to our left hand side is a guy that's got a remote control lawnmower. Because there's nobody sitting in that at the minute. He's over here. So the mast here is, uh, serves Nottingham as a telecommunications mast and it serves T-Mobile, Vodafone 3 and O2. Anyway, we're going to head down this way. Hopefully we're going to get off this road, although it's quiet, there's nobody, no cars going on it. And we're going to head into Clifton Village, which I believe is somewhere behind them trees. We've got our first look at Clifton Village. We're now entering Clifton Village. Noted in the Doomsday Book of 1066 as Clifton Cum Clampton, named after the cliff that the village sits by that overlooks the River Trent. It has been viewed as the perfect English village in the 1900s with its fats, cottages and green meadows. The village was managed by the Clifton family who used to own Clifton Hall until the 1950s. The village was known as a close village as the Clifton family controlled who lived in the village and the same families lived there within the village for hundreds of years. In 1947, surrounding land of 900 acres was purchased from Nottingham City Council to provide housing for servicemen and women from World War II and clearance of slum areas, which the area is now known as Clifton. By the 1950s, 
growing population of Clifton nicknamed the area of hell on earth. Living in concrete built houses and the lack of shops and entertainment locations for the expanding town, by 1958 it became the largest housing estate in Europe. I believe this would have been the stables for the hall uh, back in probably, well, all the way up to the 1950s. I think it's a mixture of uh, houses now. This ancient church that is grade one listed is built in the form of a cross. In the tower stands four bells. The church was restored by, in 1846 by Sir J.G.J. J. Clifton Bart. And the Clifton family are now laid to rest within the church vaults. One of the rectors of the church was Ross Bruce. He moved to the old rectory at the beginning of the 1900s. He was an eccentric man who looked after all manner of animals. He kept horses, mice, monkeys, snakes, ferrets, and even a bear and an elephant. He would often walk through the village with a small animal hidden discreetly in his clothing. He would show the animals in his sermons, maybe producing a dove from his pocket. His sister married the famous British Antarctica explorer, Captain Scott. Within the village, there is a dovecote house, which is one of only three remaining large dovecote houses in the country. So this is Clifton Hall, originally being the Manor of Clifton. Noted in the Doomsday Book of 1066, Sir so Gervais de Clifton, who was the High Sheriff of Nottingham and an MP, purchased the property and surrounding land from the de Rhodes family. The Clifton family lived in the property for over 600 years, from the late 13th century until the 1950s. Originally built as a fortification tower, but over the centuries has been expanded and adapted to become a stately home. In 1632, King Charles I stayed at the hall. Within the hall is a 70-foot octagonal hall, which is on the site of the original watchtower. In 1958, the hall became Clifton Hall Girls Grammar School for 11 to 18-year-old girls. The school had just two headmistresses, Miss Heron and Miss Squires. Jane Torville, the ice skater, is a former student of the school. My mum had a friend who also went to this school as well. The school closed in 1976. When the school closed, a large model of a phoenix, the school's emblem, was burnt to signify the end of the school. In 1976, it became part of Nottingham University Polytechnic. This stately home is renowned to be haunted with stories of ghostly activity when it was a school and with the previous millionaire owner in 2007, leaving the house after just living there for seven months because of the paranormal activity happening frequently inside the hall. Can't see any in any windows, uh, any ghosts waving at me. Although that statue in front with its arms waving with no hands, looks a bit sinister. The hall stands by the edge of a cliff that overlooks the River Trent. It is said that one of the ladies of the Clifton family jumped from the cliff to her death as she was jilted by her lover. So I've just been informed the Clifton Hall has been separated into two apartments now obviously quite grand apartments, it's a, it is a stately home uh, so you probably had quite a few rooms each. Uh, on the right hand side is a John Barbie, uh, he's lived there about two years. Anyway we're heading downwards now, you can just about see Clifton Hall up in the, between the building and the woodlands. Uh, as I say, uh, Clifton Hall is on Bills on the Cliff, so we are walking down that slope towards the River Trent now and uh, we'll hopefully get another view of it from the bottom. So we're just walking into Clifton Wood. So Clifton Wood is a large and diverse woodland that forms part of a series of woodlands that run for several miles along the River Trent. Different species grow throughout the woods. To the south there's mainly beech, lime and larch, while the northern end of the woods is dominated by large oaks and sycamore, and there are also a few giant redwoods dotted about within the woods. Obviously, uh, giant redwoods are more native to California than Nottingham or Clifton. So it's always good to speak to the locals. So just looking up the cliff towards Clifton Hall, 
So before the hall was here, actually the monks lived here. These are monk steps. So they had a house on the, or building on the top, yeah. a brook, and they used to walk down here to get their water. Now I've also been told in the dense woodlands here, underneath uh, Clifton Hall, it used to be some caves, oh sorry, tunnels. The guy I was speaking to is probably about my age. He's lived around here all his life. And uh, he was saying that there's, there's these tunnels that they used to crawl through as kids and they would take you all the way to the cellar of Clifton Hall and they would find wine bottles in the cellar of the hall. When we walk down the cliff bank, on the left hand side there is a, it looks like a bunker, an Anderson wall shelter. Clifton Hall used to use it, uh, hanging meats in there, uh, keep them cool. Uh, now I believe it's got a big iron door on it, front of it, so you can't go in there. Anyway, we're moving on through the woodlands, along to the nature reserve, and then towards uh, Barton to Fabrics. As you can see that uh, probably this part of this cliff is eroded over the years and you can see the different uh, stone formations. I presume those white lines are either, they've got to be either chalk or limestone. And then obviously the majority is clay, uh, possibly a bit of sandstone around this, a lot of sandstone in the area. So probably some of this is sandstone as well. So Gotham is two and a half miles to the left, Clifton was two miles away and Barton in Fabris is just over here. So we're in Barton in Fabis now. The name originates from the older name Barton in the Beans, as Fabis being Latin for bean. As the village is known for its bean crops in Victorian times, the village was known for its tea houses, where people would come across the River Trent on the Barton Ferry. The village today has no shops or even a pub. It used to be a thriving village of shops and two pubs. And I just looked to my left and this is what I wasn't going to expect to see today. An emu. Or is it an ostrich? I think it's an emu. A, uh, I think it's a llama. I'm not sure. There's two of them actually. One further down the fence. Uh, alpaca or llama. I'm never really sure which one's which. I've got a goat behind it <laughs> in the other field. And we're going to walk out of here. Now we're going to head up towards Frumpton and then Frumpton Hall. In front we have Radcliffe upon Saw Power Station. Now it has eight cooling towers. This was the first one in the country to have eight cooling towers. The, the chimney is actually an iconic landmark that you can see for at least 10 miles and at night time as well. I can see it from my house and I live about, I would say about 10 miles away from here, 11 miles. Anyway, we're gonna head over up this track here to Frumpton, which is about a mile and a half away.
River Trent. And then on that island, it looks like something's nested on the base. Probably a heron. Not sure what the actual island's for. Maybe to point out different currents. We're just coming into the village of Frumpton. You can see this building, it was built in 1737. We're just going to walk through the village now. So this is the entrance way to Frumpton Hall. Not sure how far we're going to get up here before we get collared. As it says it's a private drive. But it is a wedding venue, so it is a public place. Well, public go to it. So we're just approaching Frumpton Hall. The Jacobean Hall is part of an older house which was occupied by the Roman Catholic Padwell family in the 16th century. They were evicted following the Babington Plot. The Babington Plot was a plan in 1586 to assassinate Queen Elizabeth I and put Mary, Queen of Scots, a Roman Catholic, cousin of the Queen on the English throne. The lavish statement house was completed in 1617 for the Piggott family, who had it put in rose-coloured bricks. The Byron family owned the property for 100 years. Lord Byron's daughter, Ada, used to visit family at the hall when she stayed at Newstead Abbey, which was seen in my first video, where I will leave a link to here. The hall is now owned by a relation to Lord Byron, Miranda Seymour, since 1994 and is used as a wedding venue today. Well, we managed to get the picture, although I've been swiftly told to leave the premises. Uh, private property, they said, and as it says on that plaque, 1706, this gatehouse was built. Anyway, we're out of Frumpton Hall now, and now we're walking through the village of Frumpton. As you can see, it's quite a quaint village. Uh, the building to our right hand side is 1735. Now, once we get through Frumpton, we're going to head up to Gotham Hill. I'm not really sure how it's pronounced. I do believe the local People may call it Gotham, but obviously the name is slightly changed to Gotham uh, for Batman. All Saints Church in Frumpton, built in the 13th century, now a grade two listed building and it is part of an informal grouping of five churches that are known as collectively as the 453 churches, as they straddle the A453. Outside on the nave wall, there is an unusual war memorial, effigy of a soldier with, within a medieval style tomb recess. And it looks actually like it's been built in three different stages. So the tower looks like the oldest part. Then we've got this middle section, uh, built later and then again the end part uh, built of looks like sandstone it looks newer the end part so at the end of the church is these six graves and they were all descendants of Lord Byron This car needs a bit of uh, needs a bit of attention. It's more rust than yep, got a lot of rust on it. So 
that's not a roller, but I'm not sure what car that is. If anyone knows what that logo is on the front of the car? Like a crown? So we just got into Go From Wood. This is the really the biggest hill of the day. It's about 70, 80 meters, but it is a steep one because uh, at 80 meters, you're only climbing over about 180 meters. Uh, well, we best get cracking. Get onto the top of Go, go From Hill. It's a pity that uh, cameras don't give uh, hills justice because this one, looking on the camera at the moment, looks like it's just a slope but in reality it looks like I'm gonna need I would be best in coming in winter with crampons and an ice pick well there's only one way we've got to do it and let's get up the top and finish it I think it's a bit early for Christmas decorations, especially in the woods. It's only July. So the water in front of us, in the middle, that is Attenborough Nature Reserve. And then looking across the landscape, we can see uh, part of Derbyshire, Nottinghamshire. Uh, and then in the centre of the picture at the moment, right on the horizon, we have Elk Point Heights. And then right on the side of that is Comfort Mall. So in front of us we have the village of Gotham. The village is first famous for the book of stories entitled The Wise Men of Gotham, published in 1565, which depicts the people of the village as being stupid. Due to the villagers wish to pretend madness to avoid a royal highway being built through the village, as the villagers would have to maintain this route. Madness was believed at the time to be highly contagious. When King John's knights saw the villagers behaving as if insane, the knights swiftly withdrew and the king's road was rerouted to avoid the village. The saying then came that there are more fools pass through Gotham than remain in it. Originally, New York was identified as the home of the Cape Crusader when Batman made its debut in 1939. Although the comic book writer Milton Finger, who went under the ghost writer name of Bill Finger, changed the name to Gotham or, or Gotham after looking through a phone book and seeing the name Gotham Jewelers when the writer was visiting the UK. While Gotham Village is pronounced Gotham, stemming from Goat Town, the pronunciation Gotham was adapted for Batman. So I've been saying it wrong all along. It's Gotham. We're not actually going into the village. We're actually going to turn left and then follow it along the ridge and then we're going to head up towards Clifton Pastures. There's now a sculpture that's set in the middle of Gotham, which is uh, to honour the uh, name of Go Gotham or Gotham, Gotham, well, however you want to pronounce it. Gotham City from Batman, which I'll show about now.
に行こう、ね、You can do it again、ね、You can do it again You want to stick your head in that thing, it's going to hurt. You give it a bit of a feed, you look a bit skinny. I remember years ago hearing of several stories of a large black cat, panther, or cougar roaming this moorland. Let's hope if we sight it today, it's only from a distance and not close up. Although, I believe there's uh, quite a lot of cougars go out on the Friday and Saturday night in the city lights. Maybe a different type of cougar. The area we're about to walk on now is Clifton Pastures. It's just been given the go-ahead to change this tranquil area into a 3,000 new housing estate with sports facilities. So if you want to walk this route, best come soon, as it will be becoming a huge 800 million pound building site very soon. It's a pity because it's uh, been greenbelt land for well hundreds of years as ag agricultural land. The government uh, made a compulsory purchase order and uh, all visits fields will be turned into houses. The livelihood of the farmers that used to own this land at the moment there's beans on it that won't happen much longer so we're just coming back to the end of this field and then all we've got to do is cross the road and then we're back at the park and ride uh, and the tram terminus. So I found it uh, interesting. It's uh, not a route I've actually done myself and I hope you've enjoyed it too. So if you have enjoyed this uh, and you haven't subscribed, then please do. And uh, like usual, I'll see you on the next one. So look after yourselves, be safe and bye-de-bye hikers.